So you've heard of this word called limerence. <laughs> it sounds like some kind of disease, doesn't it? And maybe somebody has been telling you, you're not in love. What you're feeling is limerence and you're going, what's the difference? Hey, I'll explain it to you in just a moment. Not only will I explain the difference in these things, but I'll show you how that limerence, this amazing sensation that some people feel that is a kind of love, won't turn out like you expect it to if indeed you have it. Hmm. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Beam. We talk a lot about relationships, and if you'd like to hear more about what we say about relationships, right down there, you see that subscribe button? Subscribe, be part of our channel, and, and see the various things we talk about when it comes to relationships and love, all kinds of things. We'd love to have you be part of us, so just subscribe down there. But first, let's talk about limerence. Now, you understand that in the social sciences, I mean, you know, when I earned my PhD degree, we studied a lot about all kinds of things concerning relationships and love. And in the social sciences, we identify various kinds of love. I'm not going to explain all of these, but just to mention a few, there's a thing called empty love, believe it or not. There's a thing called passionate love. There's a thing called fatuous love. There's a thing called companionate love. Eh, that's enough. I'm already getting boring, am I not? Among all of these things, there's a kind of love that's called limerence. Now, the word was coined back in the 1970s by Dr. Dorothy Tenov. She needed a phrase to explain this sensation of feeling madly in love. Now, the only kind of love we never try to describe is true love. <laughs> you say, why? Because we can't identify it. You say, what? I mean, people feel it all the time. Why can't you identify it? It's because of the fact that it's so unique to the individual. In other words, true love is whatever you feel at any given moment that you like which has too many different kinds of definitions, too many kinds of factors, so we can't identify it clearly. We can just say, whatever you think is true love, well, for you, at least for the time being, is true love. But you probably have experienced something you felt was true love that later you decided <laughs> wasn't true love at all. Now, let's get back to this thing called limerence. You say it's identifiable? It definitely is. It's kind of an intense sort of love. I'm not saying it's not love. It is a kind of love. It's different than some of the other kinds of love in several factors. One thing about this intense kind of love is that it's an intense longing for reciprocal love from the other person. In other words, I have this intense emotion to possess you. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. I feel that I will only be fulfilled if you're in my life loving me just as much as I love you. And I crave it to the point that whenever I sense that you're not loving me as much as I love you, I actually get into this emotional roller coaster kind of thing. And so I start watching you carefully. And when you indicate or show any kind of sign of loving me deeply, I'm in heaven. I feel ecstasy. It's like, oh, nobody's ever felt anything as wonderful as this. But I become hyper vigilant in watching you because I'm so deeply longing you're loving me that I'm also noticing any sign that indicates that you may not. So even if you're frowning about something else, I may think, oh my goodness, what's the matter? Why don't you want to connect with me right now? If you're upset, even about something else, I begin to think, ah, somehow I'm pushing you away or somehow you're losing love for me, which leads to this tremendous, intense kind of jealousy because I want you to be mine and mine alone. And I live in this fear that for some reason, somehow, some way, we're not going to wind up together. And this intense fear becomes the focus of what this is all about. So that I go on that emotional roller coaster from ecstasy and joy to misery. It could even have physical manifestations where I feel sick when I feel like you're rejecting me. I, I may feel faint, I, my heart may palpitate, I may start sweating like crazy. And during this process, because I so crave being with you, I go through this thing that's called the halo effect, which means I don't see any flaw in you whatsoever. Everything about you is amazing. And if somebody points out a flaw about you, I tell them they don't understand. If I have to see it, that it does exist, I minimize it. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's a little thing. It's not a big thing. And then I will start changing whatever I need to change to make you happy. I'll change the way I dress. I'll change the way I do my hair. I'll change my habits. 
I might even change my religion. I might even change my occupation. I may even change my location. I'll move from here to here because I think somehow that'll make you happier with me. Oh, and another factor of all this because of this intense longing for us to be together forever, I think about you all the time. As a matter of fact, up to 85% of my waking hours, and sometimes it's remembering good things we've done together, just playing them over and over in my mind again. And if there's anything in my life associated with you, like you gave me a little teddy bear or something, it becomes this amazing object in my life because it's associated with you. And then I spend the rest of my time thinking not just about the things we've done together, but daydreaming about what I want it to be. And that's why I have these fantasies about us living together, the things we'll do together, the things we'll enjoy. And like I said, it becomes pervasive. Now, all of these kinds of things identify this thing we call limerence. You might be thinking, well, isn't that just the part of romantic love? Doesn't everybody go through that? Actually, no. Now, there are more characteristics to limerence. I just gave you the tip there. There's a lot more involved in that, but just enough to give you an idea where you can go, wow, I have experienced that. I have felt that. So is limerence a good kind of love or a bad kind of love? Well, if you're two single people and you have a right to each other, it can be good if you're both good for each other. So for example, if you're two single people and you have a right to each other, but one person's really going to be bad for the other, and other people are even trying to tell you that, like, don't be with him. I mean, can't you see how much he's going to affect your life in negative ways? Or don't be with her. Don't you understand how she's dragging you down? You won't believe anything they say. And in that sense, limerence is bad because it kind of blinds you to what's really going on in this relationship. If you think about that song that Percy Sledge wrote many years ago, actually he gave the credit to one of his band members, but Percy wrote it. When a man loves a woman, remember what he says, if she's bad, he can't see it. He'll turn his back on his best friend if he puts her down. He goes on to say she can bring him such misery. That has to do with that emotional roller coaster, by the way. So when you have that and the other person's not good for you, you won't see it. It's going to cause you problems, but while in limerence, you can't. Another time that limerence is bad is if either of you is already in a committed relationship with someone else. So for example, if you're married to this one and you wind up in limerence with that one, then limerence is bad because it's going to pull you out of that committed relationship into this other relationship. You'll give up this person to be with that person. As a matter of fact, in intense levels of limerence, sometimes you'll even vilify the person that you're leaving. What I mean by that is you'll make him or her into a villain. You'll find whatever bad aspects of them exist and Nobody's perfect, so there's always something bad about anybody, and you'll just magnify that. And it's like, wow, I should have never been with this person to begin with. I've never loved him or her. That's called rewriting history. You do all kinds of things here, so you can justify in your mind leaving this person for this new one that you now have this intense kind of love for called limerence. The problem is not all of this is true, but you believe it to be true. It's not that you're fabricating it. Your mind actually believes it so that you don't feel quite as guilty when you leave. So limerence between two people that are single have a right to each other and neither one's bad for the other. Fine. It's wonderful. Good for you. Limerence, if that other person's bad for you, you won't see it. Limerence, if you're in a committed relationship or if he or she is in a committed relationship, will lead you to abandon that relationship into this one. And you might be thinking, so what's the big deal? People get divorced in America all the time. People in relationships all the time. Why don't you just go with the one that'll make you happy? Because limerence always ends. Always. Now, there's been some fascinating research about it in the social sciences. Helen Fisher, for example, and her colleagues, uh, she's an anthropological biologist, I think it is. And so she studies from various ways, and she points out that it has to end. It's a biological necessity because this limerence is so intense, so overpowering. For example, the daydreaming, the thinking, all those kinds of things, the, the intense jealousy, the physical manifestations that occur, like the palpitations I referred to earlier, all these other kind of things just destroy productivity. You actually get to the point where you don't function very well in life. I mean, you really don't. 
And if people went into that state and stayed in that state, then the human race would have died out eons ago because productivity would drop so much, we wouldn't grow the crops, we wouldn't grow the animals, we wouldn't be eating, we wouldn't be building houses and all those other things that we need. And so it's a biological necessity that it ends. And if you look at the research, it'll last somewhere between three months and probably 48 months. Sometimes it, on rare occasions, it might last a little longer, but those are extremely rare situations and they're not gonna last a lifetime. That feeling of limerence does not last for years and years and years. It has a beginning and an end. It is not going to always occur. And so that's the bad thing is that sometimes people wind up making decisions thinking, I'm going to feel this amazing sensation for the rest of my life. And then they discover that they don't. And when it finally goes away, then you start counting the cost. Like, what do you mean? What did it cost me? Well, what did it cost you in terms of current relationships? Now, if you're married and you left your spouse for this person, then it cost you that. And after a while, you begin to go do away with that uh, vilification of how evil the other person was. You'll start remembering, you know, he or she was not nearly as bad as I thought when I was in the middle of all that intense emotional state called limerence. And, and you'll begin to think, well, what's it cost me in, in terms of relationship to my spouse if you have kids? And I actually did this a few years ago in a state of limerence. I divorced my wife, left my children to be with the woman I was in limerence with. It didn't work out. As a matter of fact, it very seldom works out. It's extremely rare those people even get married to each other. If you leave a marriage for a person that you're in limerence in because of that fact that it has a time span. It has a shelf life. It's going to come to an end, even though you think right now it's not going to. Mine's going to last forever. You can't convince me I'm not going to feel like this for the rest of my life. Well, if that's what you think, I probably can't convince you of that, but I'm still right and it will end. Now, I don't mean to be arrogant about that. I really don't. And I hope I didn't offend you by making that statement. It's just that in my work, not just in my own life experiences, but in my work, we have dealt with thousands and thousands of people that have been in that situation. And not one of them had that limerence last for years and years and years and years. It always ends. Now, you might be thinking, I'll be the one exception. I don't believe that you can be. I don't think it's biologically, psychologically possible for you to be. And when it does end, you're not just going to count the cost of what it cost me in current relationships, for example, to a husband or wife, but to your children. Now, my wife and I eventually remarried, but even to this day, many years later, I still see the effects in the lives of my children of what happened in those three years. I was divorced from my wife and therefore divorced from my kids when I was in that limerent state. Even though we put it back together later, there was still that effect. And so you're going to count the cost, I would hope, in terms of if I make this decision to go with this emotion I'm feeling right now, you're making a decision based on what you feel, thinking you're going to feel this for the rest of your life. And you won't. And when it finally goes away and you start looking around at what did it cost me in terms of relationships? It's a pretty big price to pay. Oh, even what does it cost me in terms of my own self-respect? The things that I believed, the things that I valued, the things that I stood for before that I actually left. I abandoned those things so that I could do what I wanted to do with this person that I had this strong limerent love for. When finally that limerent love fades, when it finally goes away and you look back around and go, how could I have hurt all the people that I hurt? Because that's not who I was. So here's the question I suggest you ask yourself. Obviously you make your own decisions for your life. You do. But ask yourself this question. What will life be like if your limerent lover goes away? You see, I never expected my limerent lover to leave me. Never. But she did. And in the thousands and thousands and thousands of couples that we work with, we have seen it happen again and again and again. As a matter of fact, in the comments section below, if you've had that experience, give us your comments. 
As a matter of fact, wherever you are in that state, if you're in the middle of Limerick and you're saying, Joe, I think you're full of baloney, you don't understand. Let me explain to you why this is going to work. Sure, write it in the comments below. We'll look at it. Or if you've been through it and you can validate for others that what Dr. Beam is saying here actually happens, then write that in your comments below as well. Let people learn. Because every day we work with people who are leaving marriages, for example, because of this amazing limerent love they have for another person. The kind of love that lasts for a lifetime is not limerence. We call it normative love, but that's another video for another occasion. Please don't be making lifelong decisions based on what you feel right now. Now, if you're thinking, well, I'm not sure I have limerence, contact us. Go to marriagehelper.com, that's marriagehelper.com, or call us at the number that you see right there on your screen. Talk to us. We'll help you think these things through. We won't make your decisions for you. That's for you to decide. But we'll help you evaluate this and, and then help you to look at things in a way where you make your own decision, but hopefully the decision that's best for you, not just today, but tomorrow and a hundred tomorrows after that. Always your choice. But wouldn't you rather make your choice using some of your logic and not altogether on emotion? Keep joining us for more videos. We'll talk more about relationships.